pleasure to have you here. Our first question is a maths. Are you a frequent user of any library? And can you tell us uh, your best or worst memory about it? Well, I, I mostly visit libraries now with, uh, with my children when they, they want to borrow books. They love to read, which I'm very, very happy for. Uh, but my whole childhood, I spent a lot of time in uh, the library in Fjallbanka. Every week, I would come and return a big stack of books and the librarian, uh, an older lady, uh, would help me pick out a new stack. And uh, so I've spent many, many hours in the library. Um, you were an economist before becoming a writer. What made you to consider a career change? I've always wanted to become a writer. For me, it was my big rock star dream. But I didn't think it was something I could actually do, and that's why I became an economist first. But I think I was probably Sweden's unhappiest economist. So thanks to our course in writing, I was able to change into a career as a writer. Okay, and why did you decide to write crime books? Ever since I dreamt about becoming a writer, which is since I was or something. Uh, I also knew that it was a crime writer that I wanted to be simply because I've loved the genre all my life. And I very, very early on, for example, fell in love with the uh, Agatha Christie books. So by the time I was 11, I think I'd read all of them. That's fantastic. And do you have any formation in criminalistics? Uh, well, I've, since I've, it's been my interest, um, I've done research my entire life without knowing that I was doing research to become a crime writer. I've always read about real murder cases, about uh, forensics, and profilings, the psychology of psychopaths, everything like that has interested me, so I've gathered a lot of information through the years. Um, what, uh, well, you have told us that you have read Agatha Christie, and do you have other sources of inspiration? Well, the Anglo-Saxon tradition of writing crime stories has been a great inspiration to me. I like the traditional way of uh, making a crime plot, so writers like Peter Robinson, Reginald Hill, Val McDermott, Scottish Dennis Miner, they've all been of great inspiration to me, but also the very, um, the very old ones, like Enid Blyton, that I started reading as very, very young, has also inspired me a lot. And what's, what's your favorite step in the creative process? Finishing the book. <laughs> That's the very best part. But I also enjoy the research a lot. I learn new things for every book that I write. Okay, and if you could choose, which literary character would you like to be? Pardon, which character? Which? Uh, literary? Uh, oh, I would love to be Miss Marple, to sit there and knit and solve murders in St. Mary Mead. Yes, great. And or Modesty Place. <laughs> I would like to be Modesty Place as well. <laughs> yes. In, in your last book, The Lion Tamer, Patrick, Erika and Melbeck appear again. How do you think they evolved along the nine novels? I'm sorry, how do oh, I think? They've evolved? Uh, I think they've changed a lot. Uh, if I start with Eric and Patrick, they have gone through a lot of life changes over the books. They have uh, gone from being single to being a couple and having children. So they have become parents, which is, is a great, great change in a person's life. And uh, when Melberg is concerned, when I started writing about him, he was quite a one-dimensional character, and I intended him to be, and I thought he was all bad. But when I kept writing about him, I discovered that he has a very, very warm heart somewhere deep inside, and I've come to like him, actually. Okay. And you have written three books about a baby called Super Charlie. Why did you decide to write children's books? That has also always been a dream, uh, because I think it's such a wonderful audience to be able to write for children. It's also a very tough audience. If they don't like the book, they will tell you to your yeah. face. Um, but I didn't have a good idea until I was expecting my, um, my third child, Charlie. And when he was born, I would start telling stories 
about him to his older siblings, saying that he was a superhero, doing superhero stuff in the night where we were sleeping. And after a couple of months of that, I realized, hmm, that's a children's book. Yeah, fantastic, very good. Thanks. You have also published a couple of cooking books. Could you recommend us any Swedish yeast? The crayfish. When you barbecue the crayfish with garlic and herbs, that's my absolute favorite. I think we do have a recipe like that in, in the first cookbook. And which books or movies are essential in any library? I think that all kinds of books, everything from um, um, everything from um, Dostoevsky to Daniel Steele. I never like to discriminate and make the distinction that there's bad literature and good literature. I think all literature is good actually. Yeah. It's just depending on what you feel like at the moment. And we know there is a TV series and a movie based on some of your characters. Are you happy with the director's point of view? I am. We decided to go in a slightly different direction from the books with the TV series. The TV series is a bit more cozy and uh, a little bit more Agatha Christie mood and I really enjoy that. Okay, thanks. Um, may I ask, what's your next project? My next project is going to be book number 10. Um, I only have the title yet. It's going to be called The Witch and that's basically all I know about it at the moment. So um, I'm, I'm working on it, but only inside my head. I haven't started writing it yet. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>